What is up everyone, this is Ken, also known as Wiltshire, and this is a follow-up video to my previous video. In my last video, I unveiled the Power Shunt mod for the RTX A4000 in cooperation with JK and G Ventures. So if you haven't seen that video, I recommend checking it out before this one. This one is kind of running through more tests in more depth with a different computer build to see if I can squeeze a little bit more performance out of that power mod. So let's get into it. First things first is we're going to start off with the build that I'll be using today to test out the A4000 to see if I've eliminated any bottlenecks that happened to be on the last build that I used which was called Optiflex. The new build that I'm going with is called Snowfall, obviously because it's mostly white. I thought it was kind of a fun name to go with. But let's get into the specifications of this computer. So we are running an AMD Ryzen 5 7600X at its stock clocks. The cooler was a Deepcool LS520 SE in white. The motherboard was an ASUS TUF B650 Plus Wi-Fi. We were running a Thermaltake BW2 750 watt power supply. And we were using G-Skill Trident Z5 DDR5 6400 MHz or mega transfers per second RAM. The case was a Corsair 4000D Airflow. In this build, we originally had an ASUS Dual RTX 4070, but I've taken that out and I have inserted the A4000 instead of the RTX 4070. And to note that this motherboard does support PCIe 4.0 and rebar, obviously. So I want to definitely check to see if those two features are going to allow us to eliminate any bottlenecks compared to Optiflex, which was PCIe 3.0 and not 4.0. And lastly, we were using a WD Blue SN570 one terabyte M.2 SSD. So those are the specifications for Snowfall. Next, let's move on to the specifications of Optiflex. This is the computer I tested the A4000 on originally. The specifications for Optiflex are as follows. So we had an i9-9900. The RAM was G-Skill Aegis DDR4 running at 2666 megahertz or mega transfers per second. Again, we were using the RTX A4000 in this computer and it is the current home for my RTX A4000. We had an Ace Attack 645 LT AIO. We are running a Corsair SF750 750 watt power supply and SFX power supply to be exact. There is a Samsung 860 Evo 500 gigabyte SSD that's on SATA. And we have two M.2 SSDs in adapters, one running the operating system and one running as a scratch disk. Now that you're familiar with the two builds that I've used for the testing for the A4000 power shunt mod, let's move into the synthetic benchmarks. We're gonna first start off with Firestrike. The stock graphics score for Firestrike before even modding the A4000 or overclocking it was 27,609. The score for Optiflex will be on the left and the score for Snowfall will be on the right. First, let's start off with the Optiflex score of 33,033. Looking at the score for Snowfall build, you'll notice that we got a much higher graphics score by about 3,000 points at 36,108. Also take note that I managed to get a little bit better overclocking on the Snowfall build than I did the Optiflex build. That could be the power delivery coming through the PCIe slot or just the more stable build of the Snowfall build. When we look at Optiflex's results, you notice that there's a 17.89% increase over the stock clocks in terms of graphics score. If we look at the Snowfall build result versus the Optiflex build, we had an additional 8.9% increase over the Optiflex build. Now if we combine those two scores together, we got a plus 26.79 increase on our graphics score versus the stock clocks which is a pretty impressive jump if you ask me. So let's move on to the next synthetic benchmark, which is going to be Speedway. So our stock graphic score for Speedway was 2,833. Again, the Optiflex score is on the left and the Snowfall score is on the right. Optiflex scored 3,550 and the Snowfall build scored 3,596. So the Snowfall build scored 46 more points over Optiflex, which Optiflex saw a 22.47% increase on graphics score versus the stock graphics card score. And if we look at the Snowfall build, it only gained a small minute difference in percentage gains of 1.29% over the Optiflex build. But when we combine those two percentages together, we got a plus 23.76% increase in our graphics score versus the stock graphics score, which again is pretty impressive. So moving on to the next synthetic benchmark. Next up is going to be Port Royal. The stock graphics card for Port Royal was 6,609. Again, Optiflex is on the left 
and Snowfall is on the right. Optiflex scored a graphics score of 8,522 versus Snowfall's 8,716. If we look at the Optiflex build, you'll notice that we got a plus 25.9% increase on graphics score versus the stock graphics score. If we move over to Snowfall, you'll notice that Snowfall managed to score an additional 2.25% increase on the graphics score versus the Optiflex build. When we put those two together, we get a plus 27.54% increase on our graphics score versus the stock A4000, which again, is really impressive to see. So moving on to our final benchmark for synthetic tests, which is going to be TimeSpy. Looking at the stock graphics score on the A4000 before it was modded or overclocked, we got a score of 11,721. Again, Optiflex is on the left and Snowfall is on the right. Optiflex scored a graphics score of 13,692 and Snowfall scored a graphics score of 14,142, which is actually a brand new world record for graphics score for the A4000. So I managed to dethrone the original creator of the Power Shunt mod, which was John from JKNG Ventures, with his score of 14,123. So with the results from the Optiflex build, we got a 15.51% increase on graphics score versus the stock A4000. The Snowfall build managed to score an additional 3.23% on top of that versus the Optiflex build. And putting those two together, we saw an overall increase in performance of 18.74% on our graphics score versus the stock A4000 after being modded. I'm going to do a quick comparison between the RTX 3070 Ti FE and the RTX A4000, which has been overclocked with the Power Shunt mod. I don't know if you know this or not, but both the RTX 3070 Ti and the RTX A4000 both share the GA104 GPU die, which means essentially the RTX A4000 is a 3070 Ti that has been gimped a little bit. Now, as you can see on the specifications above both the graphics cards, you'll see that both share 6,144 cores, 192 TMUs, 96 ROPs, and the difference is with the memory on both graphics cards. For the 3070 Ti, it has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. Meanwhile, the A4000 has 16 gigabytes ECC memory of GDDR6, meaning that the memory bandwidth is slightly higher on the 3070 Ti versus the A4000. However, if we compare my benchmarking results for the A4000 versus the best 3070 Ti stock results that I could find on 3DMark, You'll notice that the A4000 is faster than the 3070 Ti at its stock clocks in every single benchmark. For example, on TimeSpy, the 3070 Ti FE scored 12,781. Meanwhile, the RTX A4000 scored 14,142, which is a 10.11% increase over the 3070 Ti. For the 3070 Ti on Speedway, it got 3,140. Meanwhile, the RTX A4000 scored 3,596 resulting in a 13.54% increase over the 3070 Ti. For Firestrike, the 3070 Ti scored 33,050. Meanwhile, the RTX A4000 scored 36,108, resulting in an 8.84% increase over the 3070 Ti. For Port Royal, the 3070 Ti scored 7,393. Meanwhile, the RTX A4000 scored 8,716, which is a 16.43% increase over the 3070 Ti. Now, if you do overclock the 3070 Ti, it will go faster than the RTX A4000, but it is still really cool to see that we're able to outpace the stock 3070 Ti just by modifying the RTX A4000. Now with that comparison out of the way, let's switch over to some gaming benchmarks. First up is always going to be Apex Legends, as that's the game that I play the most on the A4000. Now Apex was running at 1440p on the lowest preset available using medium model details. To better understand the graph, let's go over the legend on the right hand side. The orange colored bar graph is going to be the i9-9900 with the stock unmodded A4000. The blue bar on the bar graph is the i9-9900 plus the modified version of the A4000 on Optiflex. The pinkish purple bar on the bar graph is going to be the Snowfall build which was using the Ryzen 5 7600X on its stock clocks with the power shunt modded A4000 and its overclock. So looking at the maximum FPS, everything maxed out Apex Legends 145 FPS cap. You can change this cap, by the way, if you wanted to, but most people will not be changing the cap, so I just left it on the default settings for Apex. The modified A4000 hit a solid 144. Meanwhile, the stock A4000 was at 141. Moving on to the minimum FPS, as you can see, this is where things start to get a lot different. 
The stock A4000 scored 121 FPS. The modified version of the A4000 with the Power Shunt mod running on Optiflex scored 132 FPS. And the modified version of the A4000 running on Snowfall build scored 141. Moving on down to the 1% low, this is where we see the massive change when switching over to a build that doesn't have any bottlenecks. So the stock version of the A4000 running on Optiflex got 95. The modified version of the A4000 running on Optiflex also got 95. But when running on the Snowfall build with the 7600X with the Power Shunt mod on the A4000, it scored 114 FPS. That is a massive jump for 1% lows, which means a lot smoother gaming experience when playing Apex. Lastly is the 0.1% low, which is another massive jump as you can see. So on the stock version of the A4000 on Optiflex, it scored 79. On the modded version of the A4000 running on Optiflex, it scored 77, which is a tad bit lower than the stock. But as for the Snowfall build running the modified A4000 with the Power Shunt mod, it scored 105 FPS, which is an insane jump, especially for the 0.1% lows. Moving on to the next game that we benchmarked, which was the Dead Space remake the 2023 version and it was running at 1440p on the high preset dx12 blur was off dlss was enabled motion blur was off and grain was on Starting with the maximum FPS, the maximum FPS for the stock unmodded A4000 on Optiflex got 154 FPS, the modded A4000 on Optiflex scored 167 FPS, and the modded A4000 on the Snowfall build with the 7600X got 200 FPS, which appears to be the in-game cap for FPS. Moving down to the average FPS, the average FPS for the stock unmodded version of the A4000 was 126. The modified version of the A4000 on Optiflex scored 129, and the modified version of the A4000 on the Snowfall build was 154 FPS. Moving on to the minimum FPS, the stock unmodded version of the A4000 got 102 FPS, the modified version of the A4000 on Optiflex got 107 FPS, and the modified version of the A4000 with the Power Shunt mod running on Snowfall got 134 FPS. Moving on to the 1% lows, we got a 79 FPS result on the stock unmodded version of the A4000. The modified version of the A4000 running on Optiflex scored 84 FPS, and the modified version of the A4000 on the Snowfall build scored 104 FPS. And last but not least is the 0.1% lows. So the stock unmodded version scored 46, the modified version of the A4000 running on Optiflex got 52, and the modified version of the A4000 running on Snowfall got 56. Moving on to our second last gaming benchmark, and that was Sonic Frontiers, running on 1440p using the high preset. Now I did use a uncapped FPS mod that allowed the game to go past the 60 FPS cap that was put in place by the developers. Starting off with the maximum FPS, we scored 179 on the unmodded A4000 running on Optiflex. The modified version of the A4000 on Optiflex got 207 FPS, and the modified version of the A4000 got 211 FPS on the Snowfall build. Looking at the average FPS, we scored 150 FPS on the stock unmodded version of the A4000. We scored 180 FPS on the modified version of the A4000 running on Optiflex, and we also scored the same result for the Snowfall build when running the modified version of the A4000. Moving on to minimum FPS, we scored 112 on the stock unmodded version of the A4000, and we scored 140 FPS for both the modified version of the A4000 running on the Optiflex build and Snowfall build. Looking at the 1% low, we scored 108 FPS on the stock on modified version of the A4000, and the modified version of the A4000 running on Optiflex scored 133, and it scored 136 on the Snowfall build. The 0.1% low, we got a 103 FPS result on the stock on modified version of the A4000. Moving on down to the modified version of the A4000 running on Optiflex, we scored 121 FPS, and last but not least, we scored 132 FPS on the modified version of the A4000 running on the Snowfall fall build. So moving over to our final game, which is going to be The Witcher 3. This was the next gen update that CD Projekt Red has released. The game was running at 1440p, DirectX 12, the RT preset, DLSS was set to performance, sharpen, and Hairworks was also off. So looking at the maximum FPS, the stock version of the A4000 got 74, the modified version running on Optiflex got 80, and the modified version running on Snowfall got 86. The average FPS was 67 on the stock version of the A4000 on Optiflex. The modified version of the A4000 running on Optiflex was 73. Modified A4000 running on Snowfall was 82 FPS. 
Moving on down to the minimum FPS, the stock version of the A4000 running on OptiFlex scored 62. The modified version of the A4000 running on OptiFlex got 69. The modified version of the A4000 running on Snowfall scored 77. Moving on down to the 1% lows, the stock version of the A4000 running on OptiFlex scored 47. The modified version of the A4000 on OptiFlex scored 53. And the modified version of the A4000 running on Snowfall scored 67 FPS. Last but not least is the 0.1% low of 35 FPS on the stock unmodded version of the A4000 running on OptiFlex. The modified version of the A4000 running on OptiFlex scored 46. And last but not least, the A4000 that was modded running on the Snowfall build scored 50 FPS. So those are all the gaming results that I got for the four games that I tested previously. And as you can see, we did see some performance gains when switching the modified A4000 with the PowerShot mod from OptiFlex to the Snowfall build. Next, I wanna do a breakdown of the percentage gains that we saw when compared to the stock A4000 and the modified A4000 in both OptiFlex and Snowfall. Bringing up the overall gaming comparison chart, you'll notice that there is a lot going on in this chart. Allow me to explain how this chart works. The way this chart works is all four games results are added together giving us a percentage increase or difference. For example, the maximum FPS for the stock A4000 running on OptiFlex was 552 FPS. The 552 number is a result of adding the maximum FPS on all four games that we tested, Apex, Dead Space, Sonic Frontiers, and The Witcher 3. Adding all those numbers together while running the modified A4000 on OptiFlex resulted in 599 FPS, which gave us an increase of 8.17% performance over the stock A4000 on OptiFlex. Now taking the A4000 that's been modded with the PowerShot mod and putting it into the new Snowfall build, we got a result of 642, which resulted in an even better 15.08% increase over the original stock A4000. Moving on to the average FPS, the average FPS for the stock A4000 overall was 484 FPS. When benchmarking the modified A4000 on OptiFlex, once again, we got 526, resulting in an 8.32% increase on performance. When putting the A4000 modified version into the Snowfall build, we got an even better 14.56% increase on performance. Looking at the minimum FPS, we got a 397 FPS result with the stock A4000 in OptiFlex. After the modifications on the A4000 inside OptiFlex, we scored a result of 448, resulting in a 12.07% increase in performance. Taking the modified A4000 and putting it into Snowfall, however, netted us a result of 492 FPS, resulting in a performance increase of 21.37%. Next, moving on to the 1% lows, we got 329 with the stock A4000 on OptiFlex. With the modified A4000, we got a result of 365 FPS, resulting in a 10.38% performance increase. And taking that modified A4000 and putting it into Snowfall, we got 421 FPS, resulting in a 24.53 performance increase, which is absolutely insane, having the 1% lows that much better. Last and certainly not least is the 0.1% lows. The stock A4000 on OptiFlex got 263 FPS. Meanwhile, the modified version on OptiFlex got 296, resulting in 11.81% increase in performance. And taking the modified A4000 and putting it into Snowfall increased that score to 343 FPS, resulting in an insane 26.4% increase on the 0.1% lows, which is an absolutely crazy result to get. That just means our games are much smoother after modifying the A4000. With that said, that is all the data that I collected for the modified version of the A4000, comparing it to the stock version of the A4000. I am super happy with the results that are coming from the modified version of the A4000. I knew it had a little bit more to give, but I didn't know it had this much more to give when removing the bottlenecks that are OptiFlex and putting in a newer system such as Snowfall with the Ryzen 5 7600X DDR5 memory, just an all around faster build and more modern build. It definitely helps out with the performance on the A4000 having PCIe 5.0 and rebar. If you made it to the end of this video, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I know there's a lot of numbers in this video and I appreciate it that you made it this far. My name's Kendall, so known as Wiltshire. As always, I will see you guys in the next video and I hope you guys have a good day. Take care.